Indeed, all the numbers have favored the Orangemen so far, especially Billy Packer, the shooting statistics in this game. Well, they really have, and I think a lot of that can be attributable not only to a little bit of cold start on Providence standpoint, but the fact that Syracuse, ca Syracuse came out with tight man-to-man, -man and they've really defended the three-point play very well. Now, free throws, Syracuse has been getting to the line, and they have scored seven more points there. They also have out-rebounded Providence in the first half by a margin of a plus seven. The leading scores, well, it is the freshman Coleman with 10 points and Kipper for Providence with eight. As for Billy Donovan, he is struggling here. One of six, another starter, Hop Lewis is 0 of six. Now, this is a team that has hit 53.4% from the field in four NCAA games until today. Billy, what can they do to start shooting a little bit better? Well, I'd be surprised the first time down the court if we don't see Providence set up a play where they start getting some solid screens for Billy Donovan to open things up. Because playing head on head in the man to man defense, Syracuse has been able to stay not only with Donovan, but to stay with their men. The difference between Georgetown, let's say, and the Syracuse, both Cycli and Coleman can play their men man to man, man to man without any help inside. And that means that the three fellas outside defensively can stick with Lewis Brooks and Donovan. Let's now see if we see some solid screens here. The game is being delayed while they reset the clock to 20 minutes. It is zeroed up on the giant scoreboards here at the Superdome. So they have to wait until they hit 20. We talked about Coleman and his quick start. He is four for five from the field in this game. And he is two of three from the free throw line. And Brett, he's just looking over here and smiling. That's what you want on a team. You want balance. Freshmen who say, hey, this is no big deal. And a senior who calms them down a little bit. You also have to be careful, though, that you don't smile too early. You know, Patino now brings the Providence team over. There is a chance when you build a lead, I would suspect, isn't there, Billy, that uh, you might let down in a situation like this? Exactly, and, and that's why I say that balance. You know, guys realize, uh, the senior realize, hey, this is my last go-round. A freshman thinking that, it, you know, the world's just a big bowl, bowl of cherries. And that, that balance sometimes is hard to maintain. You look at Howard Trist, there's no smile on his face. He's worked all his life to get here. And knows he'll never come back as a college player. Well, the clock is ready. 20 minutes now for Providence to get back in this one. They trail it by 10, 36-26. Providence attacking in their dark road uniform. Inside, Kipper couldn't get it out. Good inside defense by this Syracuse team. Something they featured against the Tar Heels. You can see, Holman. you can see that Rick Pitino decide to go inside as his strategy. I think he's got to go outside and get Donovan open. There's that 2-3 matchup zone. by Syracuse, not to force anything. There's the screen by Duda. Donovan's three on the money, his first three of the game. There's the solid screen, gets Donovan open. So Douglas right out of the defense. And that defensive pressure, which can trigger a run. When you can shoot the threes, you can blaze away on a run. Trish missing, but the little man underneath. Sherman Douglas with an offensive rebound and a field goal. Brett, the most underrated guard in the country. Probably this year has played better than any point guard in America. Lewis misses the three. Now he's 0 for 7. Run down by your man Douglas, and he brings it up here for the orange. It was supposed to be a big hole for Syracuse when the Pearl Washington moved on, but I'm not so sure Douglas isn't a better player right now. This is what's tough for Providence. Now, they're not a good man-to-man -man half court team. So Syracuse can use some clock and try to pick them apart. Go inside and then back out. Coleman on the turnaround. Due to rebounding for the prior. And he went inside with that quick step and missed Monroe off the Donovan. Hey, that was the field goal. That was a playground play by Douglas, but he pushed Donovan down on the hip that time as he was up in the air. Subtle play. This guy is street smart. Knocked away. Runs it down. Pushed off. Monroe goes inside to Sightly, but the fire is already defensively. Brooks comes away, and he's fouled by Douglas. That's his first personal foul. 
Syracuse committed only three fouls in the first half, and would you believe it? None on cycling. Now here's a young man who fouled out of 19 games as a freshman and a sophomore, and he played the first half of his initial Final Four appearance without a single foul as Steve Wright checks in, and he'll be challenging Cycli underneath. Wright had three fouls in that first half, so was not very effective. Kipfer and Coleman was there again defensively. Across to Monroe, who will shoot the three. Court skip pass by Syracuse and Monroe knows how to post up over there in that three-point range. Great man-to-man -man by Syracuse. They've used it the whole game except an out-of-bounds situation. Right, but no, he traveled before he pulled the trigger. Well, at the conclusion of this final four game, Billy and I will select a Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Providence and Syracuse. That's Daryl Wright, 41, who is back in. Marty Conlon, 30, the freshman out of Bronxville, also checks in for Providence. Well, Patino's showing confidence in that bench. Syracuse bench played a fr great first half, I thought, too. Brower was excellent in there. Even though he's not big on the statistics, he did a fine job for him. Oh, good pull up by Coleman. Monroe's three. Trish hits it. Providence ball at the 16:42 mark. It's 43-29. It'll be uphill against Jim Beheim for this Providence team. Billy, the more you see the Syracuse team, the more you have to respect them. They play awfully well as a group. There's a rub off for Donovan. Just not letting him get any shots off outside. Right out there defensively. Here comes Monroe. They come out of the pack. They say it's tough to beat a team three times, but this Syracuse club we're seeing today is a lot better club than Providence saw earlier in the year. Cycle cold this afternoon. That may be the biggest negative. He's two of seven. Steal by Coleman, who's oh, over the place, the and then Conlon fouls him, and Coleman gives him a dirty look, and immediately the referee steps in. Now let's see if they're going to call that two. Let's see if they're going to call this two. As deliberate as you can find. Yeah, I mean that's got to be a two-point, a two-shot foul. <laughs> Coleman says, "Hey, man, you can't do that to me." <laughs> it's intentional. Got to be two. He missed the field where the fridge. Scored his touchdown in the Super Bowl. Did Perry get one down here? Is that right? He did, yeah. Kipper checks back in. Well, I hope the fridge is watching his weight. Yeah, he needs to shed a few pounds right. like several of these Providence players. They should send him out to work out with Rick Patino's basketball team for a while. As an example, Donovan, that was what made him. Uh, he lost about 25 pounds over the course of the summer. It's amazing when, in, in regard to that kid. He only averaged 12 minutes a game as a sophomore, 3.2 points per game. What a turnaround. Boy, they have rebounded well on missed free throws. That's Trish. Now, one of the reasons you're seeing that is the rims are very hard here in the Superdome, and the ball comes out a little bit further than it normally would in many arenas. You're going to see some long rebounds before this Final Four is over. Reaching in, and a foul goes against Monroe. Now that's kind of surprising that Monroe would go in there because Cycli and Coleman have completely shut down the inside game without help from the outside, and that's what's made Syracuse effective. Here's another guy who had a great first half, Stevie Thompson. Solid game by Monroe. A big barrel chest. Bad they place trap to, right in the corner. Bad place to throw the ball. Gipper moves it. Great ball movement to right, and he traveled underneath. Eighth turnover here by Providence, and they're not being effective inside as they were against Georgetown. Why is that, Billy? Well, two reasons. I think John Thompson said, I'm not going to let them get the three pointers, and he had no help on the inside at all. But today, Cycli and Coleman are just two good inside man to man for the Providence big people. Now, that was the coldest half Providence has had all season long, and they stay cold as we start the second half. Cycli, he's a little too fired up. And Trish missing. Likely again underneath, chance for the three-pointer, and that is going to be the fourth foul on right. Cycli and Coleman just too much for Providence inside. And remember, we've got a freshman. Here we'll see Cycli going up. That's a push, but Cycli just too strong. And right just behind him can do nothing. Good job by Ronnie Cycli. Rick Patino 
has used another timeout. We'll be right back. Uh, bartender? Yeah. Uh, give me a light. A light? Yeah. Why, sure. Oh, my, my God. If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Uh, bartender? Yes? Uh, give me a... Oh, let's see. Uh, uh, give me a Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Nice call. <laughs> Thanks. Listen to the heartbeat of America. in a 350 V8 Chevy with the most available power of any half-ton pickup. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. 79 Cadillac Fleetwood. 83 Buick Riviera. Mr. Goodrens has the parts. Pontiac Fiero GT. Parts for virtually every GM car on the road today. Old Cutlass Cruiser. Genuine GM parts, the kind GM cars were designed to use. GMC Jimmy 4x4. So if your GM cars were taken care of. 69 Z28 Camaro. Take it to Mr. Goodrich. No one knows your GM car better. No one. It's 6,900 yards of pure challenge. Of course, the rewards the winner with the Tournament Players Championship. Join me for the TPC tomorrow on CBS Sports. If you want a good time, you go to Bourbon Street in New Orleans, and as you can see, it's much quieter than it frequently is down there. A lot of folks here in New Orleans, either here at the Superdome or watching the game on television. Bonnie Sykley of Syracuse at the free throw line. Providence has scored only three points in nearly five minutes of the second half, so their shooting problems continue. Sykley was the MVP or the most outstanding player of the Eastern Regional as was Donovan, the most outstanding player in the Southeast Regional. And that man to man continues. Screen to the left hand, fouled on the penetration. And that's the first on cycling. Interesting, Grant, that's the second time today Pacino has called a timeout and set up a play in which Screen was the man that took the shot. Rick Pacino had a trip set to Disneyland for his family for this week planned uh, some time ago. But he didn't expect this nightmare here today. His club just has been not able to get it off the ground on the offense. Now the pressure. And it'll have to be defense if they're going to trigger a run. Screen reaching in on Thompson. Committed the personal foul. Two team fouls against Providence and a three against Syracuse here in the second half. Billy, you know, I suppose in looking for excuses, people might say, oh, it's the shooting background, the dome is too vast. But let me tell you, I've seen some great performances in basketball out here. That Georgetown, North Carolina game, you could have shot any better than that. This time was trying to go for that lob against, and that time, uh oh, we got a real shot up here. Delray Brooks and Douglas going one. at it. I mean, we're seeing some fists thrown there, and... Delray and Douglas are not down on the ground. I'll tell you, that one exploded. That's Duda being restrained. Normally, Brent, when a fist is thrown like that, somebody goes, but it happens so quickly, I don't think the referees are going to throw somebody out. Patino furious out there arguing with one of the officials. Let's take a look at how it happened inside here. No, it really takes place outside, going for the ball. And it's going between Delray and Sherman Douglas. Now Duda and stepped Coleman. in there and Coleman, and Kipfer came in behind Coleman and wrestled him down. It was Coleman and Kipfer who were wrestled to the ground, but the two who started it are off to the right. Great job by the official there to grab Duda and pull him out of the play. Now Coleman and Kipfer are separated. Nice Howard job Trish shaking Trish. hands here with Delray Brooks. So it was instigated by two of the guards, and then the big fellas had to continue the action. Now, Cycli 
was one of the big fellas underneath. I think he's looking like a peacemaker there. Take still another view of it from an overhead and see if you can watch Douglas and Brooks get it on because that's what starts it. Now you can see Brooks is trying to yank free of Douglas who had him wrapped up. The, the guy who really was out of line there was Derek Coleman who threw that punch. He comes from the backside. I think everything could have been settled down. Now watch this. Watch Coleman. There's the see, arm. When, see Coleman come in behind. And there's Kipfer who and came so from Kipfer behind him. Comes up behind Coleman. So and I think Patino was probably saying Coleman is the one who should be tossed out of this game. I think if it hadn't happened so quickly and it was not one of those things that looked like it was premeditated, just all of a sudden came out of one little altercation. And so we've got everybody still playing, nobody thrown out, and here's where referees really have to be on guard for off-the-ball action. So it explodes here at the 1458 mark of the second half. Syracuse leading 49-31. Will this ignite Providence? Duda and Cycli fouled him, and quickly Ronnie Cycli picks up two fouls. And Derek Brower will check in for Beheim. They list him that as his third foul. I thought that was his second. Is this his, his third? They're saying now that it is his third personal. The three-point play has not been a factor yet. Loose. Douglas runs it down on the move. Dishes off to Thompson. And the foul on Lewis. You know, it's really great to go down on a two-on-one break if you're Sherm Douglas and know you have a Stevie Thompson who can catch the ball well on the break and then has that great leaping ability to be able to go up inside against anybody and get the shot off. A good finisher on the break. No, no, on the floor. On the floor, right there. was fouled. You know, Ray Brooks committed the personal. You can see the officials are not letting any hand checking take place here at all. Trying to get this game under control in a hurry. Bush maneuvers inside. Good call. Offensive foul. Good call. Paul Galvin's got Trish for offense. And now Douglas may have picked up a technical. They may have whistled a technical on Sherman Douglas coming out of there. He said something to Galvin, and they pulled the tee. Not a wise move. And here's Trish. He actually made up his mind to go inside regardless of what the defense was doing. A good job by Duda to hold his ground. Without question, a good call by the official. Looks like Syracuse has lost a little composure here, Brent, as opposed to Providence. They're up 18. No need to get shook up. Donovan will shoot the technical. He is at the line. One shot. Syracuse has committed five team fouls, as has Providence here, with 14.32 to go. You know, I watched the original drill in the practice the other day for Syracuse, and what it was is working hard to prevent the three-point shot. And it really is paying off today. They're going to have to figure out a way to get Donovan open to shoot some. Screens three. There it goes. First one of the day. Some hand checking on Douglas. He breaks free. Going nowhere. Another charge. They lost their pool. Jimmy Beheim may have to call a timeout here, Brent, just to get his club calmed down. Douglas is letting his head get away with it. Well, Ronnie Cycli and Stephen Thompson will check in. And Douglas sits down. And Coach Beheim calming him down over there on the bench. A little bit out of control here in the last couple of minutes. Donovan wanted due to out of bounds. So, along with Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger here at the Superdome, and after this Providence-Syracuse game, it will be Indiana and UNLV. And the 
foul going against Providence. Reaching in was Lewis, his second. Ronnie Cycli almost was frozen in cement there as that loose ball was on the floor. He was lucky to get himself fouled. Team six. Yeah, real good move by Jimmy Beheim to take Douglas out of the game, let him sit over there for a couple of minutes. Didn't waste the timeout. But he did, he did get an opportunity to cool a man down. Now, Syracuse has not scored since the fight. Providence has scored all four points here so far. Cycli on to pick that ball up and look to pass to somebody. Smart move. Here's what's tough for Providence, Brent. They are a zone team. They're going to have to go at some point. But they, go, they went. They switched to man-to-man. -man. Go man-to-man -to, -man to force some tempo here. Nice move by Rich Pacino. Monroe, after a couple of fakes, is short. Providence again trying to get it going. Okay, 13 minutes, a lot of time, particularly with a three-point shooting club. Johnson taking Donovan, puts for the screen, and Donovan goes off inside to Duda, who missed it, coming to the glass. Great defense by Ronnie Cycli, not to come down with the chop. That could have been his fourth. Let's see if they're going to pick up man-to-man -man again. See, they show the zone, and Syracuse thought they were in the zone. Then with a little movement, you see they're in man-to-man. -man. Thompson and Donovan bang, no basket. Foul goes against Donovan. It's the best game I've seen Stevie Thompson play in some time. He's been real positive on the offense. Delray Brooks checks in, and Douglas soon will come back for Syracuse. You know, when Douglas is taken out, he loves to play so much that he really stares Jimmy Beheim down. That may be the only thing he has yet to learn to prevent, uh, that's preventing him from being just an absolutely super guard. He's got to calm down a little bit when he gets angry. He almost gets stubborn. Short of everything on the free throw. Thompson, not a good free throw. But not that bad. No. My bad. What do you see? He pulls his hand back on it. Watch how he pulls his hand back all the time. It's like he wanted to hold it back yep. on a string. Yep. Just doesn't have a good smooth stroke. Here's the three from Lewis. He can't get it going, and Duda bangs into Douglas and commits his third. You know, Douglas, D.C. player, player of the year, as a matter of fact, wanted to go to Georgetown, didn't get a look there. Then he goes up to Syracuse and looks like he's going to be maybe a fill-in guard, maybe a role player over his career, and has now blossomed into a truly superstar. Now Greg Monroe replaces Stephen Thompson. It's a young Syracuse team. Douglas, say that before. That interior there was Cycli and Coleman. You've got a freshman and a junior. Douglas is just a sophomore. Stevie Thompson just a uh, freshman. Providence comes away. Now Lewis in the tournament was 11 for 29 with the threes as Del Rey is still short. Today, Lewis is 0 of 6. They continue to struggle. They are 3 of 14 in shooting threes. Now, here comes Donovan. Brooks and Douglas got a hand on it. So if you join this late uh, summary of this Final Four game, it would look like this. Syracuse, 42% of the field. And Providence continues to have difficulty with the threes. Ronnie Cycli of the Orangemen has scored 12 points here this afternoon. He has averaged better than 20. And finally, a three falls for Brooks. You know, Delray has been shooting that three a couple of steps too far. Good, good defense that time by Pop Lewis, and Jimmy Beheim says, that's enough, I'm taking the time. So Beheim uses the timeout at the 12.03 mark. 49-38. Good luck. Thanks. You're not just another face along the way to another place. Sorry, I can't use them. Maybe next year. Don't need them. Great lunch. You're the pride of United's friendly skies. Dinner? Oh, not just now. Rough day, huh? <laughs> Twice that. Uh... <laughs> Tomorrow's another day. We should have been here yesterday. No, they're not right for us. Mm -mm. 
got so many ways to fly you. Well, maybe well, I can do it standing by you. Can you help out a dead battery in 18B? Sure. Got nothing to add up anyway. Tough trip, huh? What, what business you at? You're well, not just flying. You're flying the friendly skies. Now, you sure you can get 350 million of them to me by the first? You're not just How flying. How is the trip? Not bad. You're flying the friendly skies. The game Monopoly has come to life at McDonald's. Win the McDLT, Coca-Cola, or one million dollars. Collect St. Charles Place, States and Virginia Avenues, and win a dream vacation. Collect these for a $250,000 home. Hello. Over 40 million in cash and prizes. Collect the right game pieces only instantly. So play Monopoly. <laughs> the effectiveness of that press from Now, Howard Trish, who you see right here, has done a good job all day helping out on the press, but watch the great movement coming from the side over here on Trish, and then Donovan fakes towards the ball side and goes back and cuts off the passing lane. Howard Trish will jump up into the air, and Donovan, by cutting it off, prevents the pass from being made. See Donovan moving over? Great defense by Providence. And that's what's the trouble when you don't have your guard back there to handle the ball. Billy, Syracuse has not scored since that fight broke out. It was 49 to 31. Providence has scored seven points since that incident. It may have ignited the fires a little bit. Nice ball. Oh, a running shot by Delray Brooks. Nine points for Brooks. Loose. Douglas banged down to the floor hard. And that's 15 turnovers for Syracuse in this game. And Providence closes to within nine points. Remember what Patino said before the game. We've got to score in order to get in our press. They've been scoring of late. That makes the press effective because they can always set up. Reminds you a little bit of the Iowa-Vegas game. Here comes the weave. On the turnover, Monroe busts out. Douglas is on his right. Nice feed, and there's a foul away from the now, ball. Big play here. Are they going to count the basket plus give two shots? This could be a four-point play. He may say that the foul took place before the basket, which just means two shots for Monroe. But otherwise, let's see if he's going to count. Big, big call here. Great steal. Are you going to see Dunham is going to foul Monroe, which is going to be a two-shot foul right there. Yeah, he fouled before the basket. The basket should not count. Now they're going to count that field goal up on the scoreboard. Brent, th th and this is how Patino reacted. I, I would agree with Patino on this one. The foul was committed before the shot was released. Therefore, that shot should not count. Three-point play in total. It's 52 to 40 here at the 11:30 mark. But Donovan sees the whole floor. Boy, he looks straight ahead and he can make a pass to anybody. He visualizes where all four teammates are. Out of range. Three way off the mark, and Douglas comes out. Oh, what a move! Krista Coleman, and Coleman fouled by Brooks. Did you see where Douglas pushed that ball all the way across court and went and chased it down? Normally you'd say a guy's totally out of control, but he sees the court well. Conlon returns for Providence. Providence had closed to within nine. Now they're down by 12. And Coleman at the line to shoot a pair of free throws. Both teams over the limit. 11-10 to go. Brent, the momentum swing on that one steal is amazing. Because as you pointed out, Syracuse had not scored a field goal from the time the fight had taken place. It'll go off Krish's hands, and so it's over to Providence. run a lot of screens for Donovan. Really surprises me. Yeah. 
Wright gets inside, off balance. Green comes away, gets into right, and now it's Conlon underneath. Aggressive boarding by Providence. Trish just didn't block out. Dangerous pass cross court in front of that basket. Time left here, Billy, an 11-point yep. lead in 10-23. I think Syracuse has to start going back inside again. Now the Providence, there it is, the cycling. Good move. Go back inside. Now the Providence is man-to-man. -man. Force them to play cycling and Coleman on the inside. Duda. And you can see, likewise, Syracuse are trying to get Cycli, get him out of there in foul trouble. Lead pass to Trish, gets it back to Douglas. Good fundamental catch and a jump stop on that play. That's why Trish didn't walk. Hands up! Hands up both legs! Contact as Douglas and Wright collide. And they'll be shooting one and one. Douglas will have a one-and-one one with Derek Brower and Stephen Thompson checking back here for the Orange Men at the 9.36 mark. Since this game began, Jim Beheim using his bench more than he normally has in the tournament, realizing that against Rick Pitino, a man he knows so well, that he will be up against a team that goes 10 deep with Ernie Lewis, 23, coming back in, and number 15, David Kipfer. Brent, I think that Providence has one more run because I sense Douglas is getting a little tired out there right now. He's been forced all day. There's two, you know, he misses the foul, bat on the jumper. Getting a little tired, and that's what Patino wants. Maybe just to wear this club down. Still a lot of time to go. Douglas has pulled down eight rebounds in this game so far for Syracuse. Foul is charged, number 15. Not unusual. He said he's averaging almost three a game on the season. This is a tough kid. He can't believe he missed those two. Look at him look up at that rim. You don't want to give a guy with this kind of heart a couple of chances. Off to the right end short. Gives it to Duda. Good block. Holman has been strong defensively. And here comes Douglas. Beautiful to Thompson. Threaded the needle with the pass. Again, you like to have a finisher on the break. I'm amazed how well Thompson's catching the ball. He had that all that tape on his hand in practice. He's taken it off and shedded it for the game and still has a good presence to catch it. Knocked away by Brower. Donovan's three, push off. Duda's offensive rebound, and Brower is charged with his first personal. Brower doesn't have a point yet today, does he? He's played a lot. In the first half, Brower and Stevie Thompson came in, played 19 minutes. So although Beheim hasn't gone to his bench, he's really gotten quality minutes out of Brower, who, like I said, hasn't scored a point, but has been effective. Douglas to pass and go through. He wants to see what the defense is. Don't think Douglas saw him. Yep. Like that forced the turnover. Here's Screen. Donovan's on his right. Screen didn't see him at time, and he took it for the layup anyway. Scored and drew the foul. That's three personals on Douglas. Brent, as I said, I think Douglas is getting a little tired, both mentally and physically, out there on the floor right now. Now, Jimmy Beheim was calling for a set play, but he couldn't tell whether Providence was in their zone or really playing a man-to-man. -man. He wanted Douglas to pass and go through to see the defense, but it was too late. Big difference at the line, a nine-point edge for Syracuse. They lead the game 58-46 with Howard Trish, one of the co-captains, replacing the other co-captain, Greg Monroe. 
Now screen with 11 points for the Friars this afternoon. He's hit four free throws. Good pass to Trish. And who gets the rebound? Underneath, and it's knocked away, and Friars will come out. Conlon's pass overlet his man and Trish, but there is a personal foul, and it's going to go against Coleman. This game Monday night at 8 Eastern time will play the winner of our upcoming contest between UNLV and Indiana. That's still ahead of us this afternoon. The Shark goes against the General. UNLV, Indiana next. For Providence, number 20, Carlton Screen, shooting 1-1. Do you get the feeling, Brent, that there's a little momentum going here? Well, I've had it ever since the fight. Really, I think they turned on Coleman because he came in and threw a bit of a sneak punch, and I think that fired the Friars up a little bit. A real key coming into the game to me right now is going to be Ronnie Cycli, and if you're Syracuse, you want to get the ball to him for the next couple of minutes. Force Providence to try to stop him inside to loosen things up. Douglas trying to do too much outside. Here's Monroe. Always ball against Providence again. I think that's Wright's fifth. So they lose their first player because of five. Duda comes in. And Steve Wright leaves. Wright, of course, has played very, very well. Had a big game against Georgetown. Had played well against Syracuse at Syracuse, but could do nothing here today. Two points. Billy, really, what about uh, Rick Patino's work ethic? This team has worked so hard all year long. How would that work in his advantage now, digging uphill with eight minutes to go? Well, I think he has, he's a believer in what he's doing, and of course he's gotten his team to do likewise. They're in great physical condition. They're not going to back down at all. He's got the bench, so he's used the bench, and the players out there are much fresher than the Syracuse players. So I think Syracuse is going to have to go ahead and dig way down to hang on to this lead even though it looks comfortable at this moment. It is 11, and now we go inside of eight. Donovan. Cycli dribbles out with a strong offensive rebound, waits for help, and Douglas quickly arrives, and here's Trish. Now they've got Providence in the man-to-man. -man. We were what Bayheim wants. Lewis comes out, but the ball went out of bounds. Oh, he's called for a personal foul. Beheim can't believe the call over here on the far side. I thought the ball had just been knocked out of bounds. Well, there's a case where the entry pass on into the forward is just a little bit too long, which played into the hands of Pop Lewis, who's quicker than Trish. And what it does, too, Brent, is sets up if he can make this. Now, see, there's what he was talking about. Great call by the ref. Trish using his hands to keep Lewis away. If he can make this free throw, these free throws, now they can be back in the press again. He's had a tough day, hasn't he? Shooting. There's his first point of the afternoon for Pop Lewis. He's a senior at a Germantown High School in New Philadelphia, and he really struggled here this afternoon. Hit the shot that beats Georgetown at the last buzzer. Also hit the free throws to beat St. John's. Break that big streak, streak of home wins. Back to 10. They lead Trish. Knocked away by Screen, who came in. Trish had an eye on the big fella, Duda, coming over. And Screen slipped around and picked his pocket. You've got to like this freshman guard, don't you? I think Patino was right and said that, in my particular case, I didn't give Screen enough credit for that game against Georgetown, the Big East, that they missed him so much coming off the bench. You can see why. Away from Cycli. Loose and Douglas comes up with it again, and here's Monroe. Robbins just shutting everything off in the inside. it outside the screen had a hand on that one he had a hand on douglas's hand i thought no foul called now douglas comes down with a switch off and here's cycling trish cleans up if it goes yes big moment in the game for syracuse providence attempting to mount a rally here 
in the final seven minutes, and Trish gets one to fall, and he can complete the three-point play here for Bayheim with the free throw. David Kipfer and Delray Brooks into the game. On the floor, Kipfer, Brooks, Donovan, Duda, and Lewis for Patino. Syracuse is starting five out there. And it is 63-51 at the 6.55 mark. Here's that good rub off play for Donovan. Donovan's two is short, run down by Monroe. But Coleman almost made the big mistake. He was out there and Donovan pulled away but didn't realize, hey, the most dangerous guy on the floor is the man with the ball. Those long arms paid him well there. A little spread out. They want Providence in the man-to-man. who was the assistant coach to go up against the head man. Down to six. Loose on the floor. Providence comes up with it. Kind a strange strategy with six minutes to go. Up 12, playing pretty well. Swings inside. One for nine. Ten. 63-53. Monroe inside. Great pass off the dribble by Douglas. That one had to break the keynote back right there to give up an easy field goal. Got a beautiful layup to fall. Now you have to believe that the Syracuse team is going to get a shot at a national championship. They've got one in hand here, no doubt about it. They have held off this burst by Providence. They've got it down toward the 440 mark, up 65 to 53. But with the clock, Brent, that ball was touched. Why is Coleman not going after it? Syracuse ball. Coleman thought if he touched it, it would be back. Wait a minute. Paul Galvin came over. We may have a change on this call. Take a look at this, Billy. See, Kipfer got a little piece of that ball, which meant that it was a free for Coleman to go back and pick it up. He must have thought that it would have been backcourt. He fouls Kipfer. Now, Galvin came over and changed the call. The referee came in and changed this call, and the foul is going to go against Coleman. That's his third. Brent, think about the play there if you're Coleman. Even if the ball is backcourt, you should go over, run down, pick up the ball. Because what can happen is you could trip and uh, it'd give Providence an easy play. So he really should have gone after the ball, not worried about what Kipfer was doing. Yep. Get up, baby. Makes no sense. He grabs the rebound anyway, huh? here by Syracuse. Changes. Five seconds. Huh? Is that what they called or a timeout? No, we got a timeout. Oh, okay. It's been called by Jimmy Bayheim of Syracuse. 18 seconds on the shot clock when you come back. State Farm agent Bob Scatina. This family, the Nilsons, just moved into town. They said it took them a while to find a new doctor and a new dentist. 
but finding a new insurance agent was easy. They liked the way their State Farm agent back in Montana handled all their family insurance. So all they had to do was look for this sign. And you could find one almost anywhere. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We'll announce the final cuts at the start of practice. I keep speaking loudly and I think you got to start hitting from out there, Harris. Oh, I need a drink of cool, cool rain. Well, we start our sports coverage on CBS tomorrow with Sports Sunday at noon Eastern time. Special performances from the World Figure Skating Championships to be followed by the Women's Championship. A couple of long shots came through in the semis. Tennessee will play Louisiana Tech, and then we will bring you the Tournament Players Championship, one of the toughest courses on the tour to be featured in that one. Here, Billy Packer, 65-53, 4.13 to go. Providence will have to start using one of the weapons that they used all season, and that's the three-point play. Also, what they can think about is fouling, because Syracuse not a good uh, free-throw shooting club. And there is a foul. Tipper trying to go ahead and draw something on Douglas. Jimmy Beheim's had a good game on the bench today as a coach. Seems he had his team well-schooled in the fact of how he wanted to handle that three-point shot defensively. And now he's kind of kind of playing with a yo-yo right here, delaying the game a little bit, trying to open things up. Isn't it fascinating how many head coaches dominate assistant coaches after they leave them? Think of all of those coaches that Bob Knight has turned out through the years. And when they come back to play Indiana, they can't beat them. Think about in football, Paul Brown, a great master of the Cleveland Browns, all those coaches that he turned out. They couldn't beat him in football. And now today, Beheim apparently going to run his streak to 5-0 and against Rick Patino, who was his assistant coach for two years. Just one of the great fascinations for me. Donovan getting inside, pulls the trigger. That's something they have not had here this afternoon. That's eight for Donovan, who came in averaging better than 26 points. He was the leading scorer in the tournament until this afternoon. But Bayheim's defense, which featured the man-to-man -man here today, has shut him down. And now the Orangemen begin to move in closer toward a shot at a national championship. If you're wondering how big this dome is, where we are, you folks in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome, you know how big that is? We can put several Carrier Domes inside the Superdome down here in New Orleans. Yeah, it's unusual for them to play before more people than they normally play at home. Almost double. Monroe coming inside. Offensive foul is the call. Now talking about crowds, Syracuse this year set an all-time home record. 657,160 people saw them play this year in that dome. That's amazing, isn't it? Great basketball city. Syracuse not going back to the zone at all. They want to keep right out there and prevent that three-point play. Douglas with a steal, and here they come again. My general stays in command, even though he lost his cool for a short time, following that fight which ignited between he and Delray Brooks. I think he's got a lot of satisfaction stripping Donovan of the ball that time. Syracuse bringing that clock down every trip now. We get down inside at 240. Delray Brooks. So along with Jim Nance, Dave Brown, Billy Packer, I'm Brian Musburger. We're glad you could join us this afternoon. This is the first of our national semifinals. It has been Syracuse and Providence, and the Orangemen have led it all the way. It is 66-55 Syracuse. Providence not shooting well in this semifinal game. Way off the game for them. Fred Monroe's been to the foul, and that was his 57th foul shot of the year. So you can see he knew what his role was this year. Get out around that three-point line. Don't penetrate a lot. Be the guy that we pass out to. Get up. And he goes ahead and uh, Coleman ran it down, got a hand on the ball, and then tracked it down. The freshman's been a strong rebounder all game long. He has 11 rebounds here this afternoon. On both ends of the floor. Cycle turns inside and draws the personal foul. That's about all Providence could do. Good move by Ronnie Cycli to feel the defender right on his hip. David Sendaker, who has checked in for a brief time, commits his first foul. And Duda returns for the last 220. Don't move after hands on. Two shots. 
been a long time since I've seen Syracuse play where they didn't use the zone except in out-of-bounds situations the entire game. Stayed right with the man-to-man. -man. Ronnie Cycli's father traveled here from Greece to see the Final Four. A young man who took up basketball late, went to a prep school in Massachusetts. And he's one of the most valuable figures as far as this Syracuse March toward a championship is concerned. And the faces grow longer and longer over there on the Cinderella side. As it may be pumpkin time for the Friars, but what a great run they've had in this tournament. Goes over to Syracuse at 2-11, 69-55. But for young kids watching Donovan play, they ought to watch his eyes and see how he sees the whole court at all times. Two on one, Douglas has Monroe back to the little man. Classic two on one. Got to go for threes here. Duda. Holman comes away again and out of the pack with his 12th rebound. Here's Monroe. He drew the foul. Donovan was with him on that side, and that's the third on Billy the Kid. Now, Brent, in no sense, holding it up. They had themselves a three-on-one break. Patino calls a timeout. 147, Syracuse closing in on a shot at a title. Cadillac introduces Alante. overhead valve Honda riding more it transforms cut into grass into a memorable Sunday drive the Honda riding more it could be the car of the year overhead view of the granddaddy of the dome stadium here in downtown New Orleans so we'll move Syracuse ahead. They've got 147 to run the clock out, and they'll play the winner of our second game. And what a heavyweight contest that figures to be. UNLV in Indiana. Hit Monroe. He's played a smooth game for the Orangemen. They've got a couple of co-captains who don't lead in scoring, don't lead in rebounds, but they get the job done. Their names are Trish and Monroe out there. Oh, Brower, who's had a fine game off the bench. How many times have they gotten offensive rebounds on this free throws today? It's got to be four or five. It's hard to believe that the team that had the pearl in the backcourt, Raphael Addison, they couldn't get to the final four. Team without him the next year. Let's let's snap back for a moment to last year's tournament. Do you remember the two most embarrassing defeats? Sure. Number one was up in the Carrier Dome. Jim Beheim, the Syracuse team, that are roundly criticized for losing to the Naval Academy. Then there was that stunning upset of Indiana by Cleveland State. Cleveland State turning out to be a little bit better team than you might have imagined. Who would have guessed or bet at the time that both Indiana and Syracuse would rise from those ashes and make it to the Final Four? You mentioned Cleveland State a little better than we thought. David Robinson wasn't exactly... <laughs> yeah, I was saying so, okay. Not exactly uh, what he chopped liver. Been honored here... Uh, throughout New Orleans for all of his Outstanding Player of the Year awards. The applause is for Coleman, who sits down. Billy, I think they should put the sports writers back in the stands and move the fans in behind the benches so I can see the pom pom. <laughs> You're not going to get yourself in a lot of columns doing that kind of stuff. Or maybe you will. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you <kidding. laughs> 
this boy's got his pay. Oh, I thought he had great. <laughs> and I'm staying off of this subject. <laughs> Scream comes on the inside. He's had a fine game. He sure has. As a matter of fact, he's the only fellow that when you really look down here for Providence and say has played above what Basketball Rick Pitino probably would have hoped for. Him. Been a rough day, particularly for that outside threesome that they count on making that eight three-pointers per game over the course of the year. They just haven't been able to get on track. It was fascinating at practice yesterday with Syracuse. They played on the same floor that UNLV warmed up on, and they came out a little bit early, and they were really watching the running Rebels get ready for Indiana. And who knows? Maybe it'll come down to those two on Monday night. Monroe is fouled over here on the uh, on the far side. Had a great year, didn't he, Rick Pitino? Standing here for us very let's well. Also, let's also remember for a moment that he has been on such an emotional roller coaster with the tragic death of his six-month-old son a few weeks ago. That was on the day that they announced the pairings and he was headed back and they took him out the bus to tell him and he, he was talking to me about it yesterday. And he said, you know, Brent, I, I really feel for my wife, Joanne. She had to drive back and forth to that hospital every day up in Boston. And, she carried the emotional burden for this family. And then this team pulling it together and getting all the way to the final four. Certainly no disgrace in coming up one game short, although I'm sure that the Friars would like to have played a little bit better here this afternoon. They did not shoot well in the first half. Got into a deep hole and just have been unable to come back. Lewis is three. A little late, but he gets one to fall. They are five of 18 from three-point land. Way below their tournament average. GMAC. Official sponsor of America's Dreams. The game Monopoly is... A successful Syracuse team here in the national semifinals winning today 77-63 over Providence. And now it's 16 consecutive wins for Syracuse over the Friars. Now on Monday night, the championship final will have the Orangemen against the winner of the game coming up next between UNLV and Indiana. Right now, let's go back down to courtside. Brett Musburger with the winning Syracuse Army. All right, Jim, thank you. We're with Ronnie Cycli and Coach Jim Behan. Ronnie, you were acting as a peacemaker. Were you able to see how the fight got triggered? No, not really. I, as soon as I turned my head, something happened. Uh, oh, I still people swinging at each other. I have no idea what happened. Jimmy, how did you see it from the bench? I couldn't see it. I just saw it start, and then I just wanted to get the one in front of me broken up, so I just tried to keep those two separated. The province is physical, and it's, it's a physical game. It's just one of those things that breaks out sometimes in the Big East. Ronnie, how do you dominate this team so? Well, province, you can never uh, you can never dominate province because they're such a pesky team inside. They don't give you anything. They, make, they frustrate you inside. You know, if you do have a layup, they're going to foul you and make you earn it on the foul line. And it's just like, I'm glad this game is over with. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll play against the man-to-man -man team. And uh, that'll be much better. Jimmy, talking about man-to-man, -man, your key, of course, playing against Providence has been man-to-man. -man. But this Syracuse club we're seeing really does play good, solid man-to-man -man defense, doesn't it? Well, Howard Trish triggers it and Sherman Douglas. They trigger and then we have the two shot blockers in the back. But we played good man-to-man -man all year. This year and last year we led the league in field goal percentage defense. But I think it's overlooked a little bit in, in looking at us as an offensive team or a zone team. We played Providence both times man-to-man uh, -man, and yet they were writing about how they're going to play against our zone in the paper. So we had no intentions of playing them a minute of zone. Hey, what's it like talking to Sherman Douglas when he gets thick-headed out there on you, says he's going to go all the way? You told me something sure. coming over here that he did for the first sure. time in his career. First huh? time ever that he takes it up inside no matter who's there, if, <laughs> if there's three seven-footers. But tonight, first time ever, he said, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll take it out next time. He I, gave you a maybe. I, huh? I'm not sure he will, though. How about it, Sherman? Sherman, let me, uh, let me ask you, first of all, about how the fight broke out between you and Delray Brooks. Well, um, against us and Providence, it's always going to be a tough game. And it was a Big East game, and we just got tied up, and we just pushed and shoved each other. It wasn't really nothing serious. It was just a pushing match, that's all. All right, now, Greg, you're one of the seniors. You and Howard Trish bring some leadership to this ball club. When the season started in your wildest imagination, and you've got a wild one, did you ever think you'd wind up playing for the national championship? Uh, we, never, we never thought we'd get this far, but uh, we thought we had a good ball club. We had some good young guys coming in, and... We knew Sherman would be a great point guard for us. It was just a matter of gelling together and work as a work as a group and uh, just play as hard as we can, go as far as we can. Sherman, what about the second game? Who do you think is going to win, Indiana or UNLV? Well, both ball clubs has a great team and a great coach, and we really don't care who wins. Um, I think 
Jordan LV might have the edge because of their court speed. We just glad to be here. All right. Congratulations to all of you. Good luck on Monday night. Let's go up to Jim Nance. All right, thank you very much, Brent. When we come back, we'll talk to the coaches who were in last year's national championship final, Denny Crum from Louisville and Mike Krzyzewski of Duke. We'll get to that in just a moment. See, you're John McCarty. John. We need an answer now. With a fast decision to make. And your people. Over our national semifinals. The winner will take on Syracuse victorious over Providence. 77-63 in game one here today at the Superdome. As we come back inside, I'm joined now by the coaches who were in last year's finals. Denny Crum of Louisville and Mike Krzyzewski of Duke. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. What did you think of the first half, Coach Crum? Well, I, I, I felt Syracuse was way too strong inside. I think they're rebounding. They just dominated the play inside. And if you played in a dome before, you know that the outside shooting is usually a little bit difficult. And that's what Providence had lived by. And uh, I didn't feel that they'd have a good shooting percentage here. You, you attribute that to the, uh, to the depth, depth perception? Because yeah. everything's so far away behind the basket. Just different. Uh, Syracuse, of course, plays in the dome, so they're used to it. Mike, who matches up better now for Syracuse between UNLV and Indiana? Which team do you think would favor a matchup for Syracuse? Well, I want, that's why I'm wearing an Indiana button. I want Indiana to be in there no matter what the matchup is. I think Indiana, I think Syracuse will give trouble to both teams because they're inside strength, like Denny had said. I thought a key kid in that ball game, I don't know what you guys mentioned, but Trish, Trish had three big offensive rebounds in the game. And it seemed that, especially that three-point play, when it was going to look like Providence was going to come through, that was, I think, the big play of the game. And he rolled back on his side and hit the free throw to complete yeah. the three-point play. What is Sunday like after winning on Saturday? You have two days until the national championship final. I think the first thing, like Denny and I, you, you guys dragged us out of our locker rooms and you had to do all that TV stuff. And I think to get them rested, rested is the main thing. Well, I, one of the things that you can't hardly wait for that day to get over. You know it's coming, you know it, you got to wait and practice and all that, but you can't wait for it to get over. Denny, everyone knows you were critical of the NCAA selection committee. Your team was left out of this tournament. You've had a couple of weeks to think about that. Now, what are your reflections on it at this point? Well, I, I really don't, didn't mean it to be critical of the selection committee. Just the process that allows the committee to use so, so much subjective judgment in terms of picking the teams. The rules say that they're supposed to pick the 35 best at large after automatic selection, and that was not done, and I think that the process needs to be changed. Have you uh, changed your mind now about next year's schedule or changed your philosophy with the, with the tough schedule you had this year and it didn't work out? No, it's my hope that that tough schedule will help us next year like it did two years ago before we won the championship last year. That tough schedule really helped us. All right. I'm going to have you two look at some of the uh, our one fights that took place in the uh, game here between Syracuse and Providence. This was one brief altercation. And uh, after this, Providence went on a nine to nothing tear. No technicals were called. This is just, there you see a punch flying and landing in there. Well, I tell you, those kind of things can happen because, uh, you know, it's a tension-packed game and it means so much, but it's a shame that they do, but that's just the nature of athletics. Uh, I was surprised there were no technicals called or no one removed from the game, but I guess they felt Final Four, let's just call it even, and it wasn't, you know, something that just happened, I guess. Mike, quickly, what is Bobby Knight thinking? You know him so well, you, you played for him, you were a coach for him. What's he thinking right now? I think the main thing, he's wondering if his offense is going to be good enough to attack at Las Vegas' defense. I think he's more concerned about his offense than his defense. I think he has a great defensive plan. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here at the Superdome. Right now, let's take you to James Brown, who is standing by with Providence coach Rick Pitino. James? Okay, Jim, thank you very much. Coach Rick Pitino, your team 36% from the field for the entire game. The three-point shot wasn't there. What do you think the problem was with the outside shooting? Well, I think Syracuse played outstanding defense. We tried to go inside. They have good shot blockers. They just over outplayed us tonight. It's a tribute to their defense. And we had an off-shooting night. It's a combination of both. But normally when you have off-shooting nights, you credit the defense. I talked to some of your players before the game and asked them if, in fact, they thought depth perception might be a problem. Some people also bring up the fact that you had a week off and maybe the team missed the rhythm a little bit. As a coach, what do you think about those two possibilities? Well, it is a, it's obviously any time you play in a football stadium, it's a, it, is, it is a tough background to shoot in. 
But no, we were on top of our game. We've, we've played exceptional basketball going. Syracuse had a week off as well. So we have no excuses. They just played outstanding basketball. They're a credit to the Big East. And I'm really proud of our kids. They tried. They just couldn't get the press on because the field goal percentage was so low. Emotionally, it seemed as if the fight did spark you guys, but not quite enough. No, we just couldn't shoot a high enough percentage to do anything with it. But they kept stopping our rallies, and, and they're a credit. They really played outstanding basketball. You individually have had a strong season. Will we see you at Providence next year? Where, where else am I going? <laughs> Coach Rick Pitino, outstanding year. Congratulations. All right, Jim, back to you. All right, James, the floor, uh, the floor right now filled with players from in